हाउ माई डियर वॉरियर्स वेलकम टू द वेदांत इंग्लिश चैनल एंड दिस इज योर कैप्टन श्रेयर्स एंड फर्स्ट टाइम ऑन यूट्यूब यू गोन टू सी दिस कॉन्सेप्ट ऑफ एक्सपेरिमेंटल फिजिक्स फॉर द वेरी फर्स्ट टाइम ऑन ऑन यूट्यूब सो देर वर सम एक्सपेरिमेंट्स विच वर एडेड इन ट्वेंटी ट्वेंटी फोर राइट फ्रॉम योर कॉम्पिटेटिव एग्जाम पॉइंट ऑफ व्यू एंड आई फील दैट we should do these experiments separately because i know many coaching institutes just one second yeah many coaching institutes won't deal with this many people uh, you know end up skipping this but let me tell you i am going to cover up all these experiments which were added recently and also let me tell you you might get at least one question reason being since it is mentioned explicitly in the syllabus since it is mentioned explicitly in the syllabus right so uh, i feel there will be at least one question and maybe if you are uh, lucky or unlucky you might get two questions from this so let me know my dear warriors if i'm audible and visible right let me know in the chat box let me know in the chat box all right at least i can see myself over here yes i am i am good evening good evening good evening now i have mentioned the weightage just now right the weightage will be the weightage will be at least 4 marks to 8 marks maximum two questions minimum one question and i feel these questions are going to be very straightforward there will be some data given and there will be some formula which will be used or some concept which is applied and based on that you have to find the required thing all these things are usually taught as a theory part when the specific chapter is uh, done okay when a specific chapter is done but many times it happens there are some additional things in these experiments which needs to be tackled separately so i'm going to go through all the experiments number 1 number 2 i'll show you the formula or application or the concept behind it number 3 i will show you some questions also based on it so are you ready my dear warriors and if you are ready put some hearts put some smileys in the chat box right away right now yes this is going to be a long class let me tell you uh, this will definitely definitely be a very very long class definitely okay happy evening so let's begin with the lecture and let other students also know that shreya sir is live right now on the channel so that they also do not miss this particular lecture okay let's start let's start my name is captain shreya in case you do not know about me and uh, i have been teaching kids for a very very long time producing all awesome awesome amazing results and sending kids to you know the top notch institutes in the country and here i am to make sure that today you study really well so that tomorrow you enter your dream college so thank you for liking and thank you for subscribing the vedanto english channel wow nice to see all the hearts coming up very good so everybody is active everybody is active awesome awesome thank you so much thank you so much dear students thank you so much means a lot now the first experiment is vernier caliper see in this particular experiment generally what happens you will be given certain values regarding what is the main scale reading vernier scale reading and then you will be asked to find out what is the least count what is the diameter what is the thickness those kind of things what is the job of a vernier caliper the job of a vernier caliper is to measure is to measure is to measure basically the dimension dimension of length the dimension of length like for example to measure the thickness of a book to measure the thickness of a sheet to measure the diameter of a wire to measure you know thickness of some nail so those are the applications of vernier caliper in a vernier caliper you have the jaws you have the jaws in the jaw you keep the object in the jaw you keep the object maybe i can put one pandu over here and what is the thickness of this pandu so you clamp those jaws and when those jaws touch the object you cannot move it further and that's when looking at these values you will be able to figure out you will be able to figure out the actual width of that thing actual width of that thing yes in this vernier caliper you can see this particular thing this is your basically uh, your main scale you can call it this is your main scale this particular part this particular part is basically your main scale my dear warriors and do you see this one over here this can be slided this can be slided left and right 
that is called as the vernier scale what is it called it is called as the vernier scale so this is called as your vernier scale vernier scale and this one over here is called as your main scale keep that in mind main scale keep that in mind right if you if you put a pandu here you can measure what is the width of this pandu but here on the top here on the top you can measure the internal diameter of some object imagine there is a hollow cylinder some thick hollow cylinder so if you put the cylinder over those jaws those jaws you keep on expanding till it touches the inner parts of that cylinder you can measure the inner diameter so imagine this was a hollow cylinder like this this is the thickness so you can measure this value from the internal jaws here you measure the outside diameter or outside uh, distance or outside length so this is used for inside length this is used for outside length that is the main application of a vernier caliper till this point everything is clear till this point my dear warriors is everything clear do let me know in the chat box great now <clears throat> now very good very good now how do you measure the least count how do you measure the reading how do you measure the diameter and all these things let's have a look at it first of all what will be given to you is what will be given to you is you will be given the uh, number of divisions of vernier scale coinciding coinciding with with the main scale divisions with the main scale divisions just using this data and also the uh, length of the length of one main scale division will also be given to you just using these two data points what you can find is basically the least count what you can find is basically the least count the least count of the vernier caliper of the vernier caliper and the formula for finding out the least count least count is the smallest distance that can be measured this is nothing but your smallest distance that can be measured that can be measured that can be measured can be found and that least count is the modulus meaning i don't know which one is bigger which one is smaller but the modulus of modulus of one main scale division minus one vernier scale division one main scale division minus one vernier scale division example example let me give it to you over here example let me give it to you here if if 11 divisions of main scale coincide with 10 divisions of vernier scale then then the least count is how much lc means least count then the least count is how much let's have a look at it and what should be given one more thing it's a normal scale so for a normal scale for a normal scale one division of the main scale is always one millimeter unless it is given otherwise one division of the main scale is one millimeter unless it is given otherwise okay so now this much is given question is find the least count what you will do is my dear students the least count will be the least count will be nothing but observe this very carefully observe this very carefully one division of main scale minus one division of vernier scale one division of main scale minus one division of vernier scale so one division of main scale minus one division of vernier scale one division of main scale is already given the main scale the main scale which is there there are some divisions on it one division on that main scale one division on that main scale is already given to be one millimeter is already given to be one millimeter is that right everybody great in that what is the length of one vernier scale division so for that use this information for that use this information 11 divisions of main scale is 10 divisions of vernier scale meaning meaning 11 millimeters 
corresponds to 10 divisions of your vernier scale. 10 divisions vernier scale will be 11 millimeters because each division is 1 millimeter. So think about it. So think about it. What is one division of your vernier scale going to be? You divide 11 millimeters by 10, which is going to be 1.1 millimeter, which is going to be 1.1 millimeter. So one vernier scale division will be 1.1 millimeter. Now 1 minus 1.1 is 0.1. Take the mod value always. So that is the least count. So that is the least count. Is that clear? Everybody with me? Everybody with me? Understood or clear? Awesome, awesome, awesome. So first step is always to find the least count. For finding the least count, you need to know one main scale division, one vernier scale division. Just subtract the two, always take the modulus value. Don't worry which one is bigger, which one is smaller, always the modulus value. So always try to find how much is the length of one division of vernier scale because you will be given these many divisions coincide with these many divisions of main scale. So 11 millimeters is 10 divisions of or 10 parts of vernier scale. So one part of the vernier scale will be divided by 10, which is 1.1. So 1 minus 1.1 is 0.1 millimeters. Is this clear? Very good. Awesome. Now the next thing, next thing is understand when you actually put something, you move this vernier scale either left or right. You move this vernier scale left and right till you fit this object over here and then you take some readings and then you take some readings. So say for example, this is your main scale. This is your main scale, something like this. Let's say this is 22. Let's say this is 22, 23, 24, 25. This is 25, something like that. And your vernier scale below is something like this. Vernier scale below is something like this and maybe it is something this way. Okay. Maybe it is something like this. Okay. Maybe this is zero. This is one. This is two. This is three. This is four. This is five. So on and so forth. So on and so forth. Then, then if this is your vernier and this is your main scale, then the main scale reading, the main scale reading means on the main scale, what reading will you take? That reading where the zero of the vernier coins or crosses. Where is the zero crossing? It is crossing after 22. Zero of the vernier. This zero is beyond 22. So the main scale reading will be 22. How much will it be? 22. Is that point very clear my dear warriors? Great. Then you have to measure what is the vernier scale reading? What is the vernier scale reading my dear students the vernier scale reading is the vernier number the markings which are there which coincides with some division of the main scale if you notice this one is not coinciding with any main scale this two is not coinciding i think this three is coinciding over here so the vernier scale reading is not 25 it is this number the vernier scale reading is the reading on the vernier which coincides somewhere on the main scale. So the vernier scale reading will be 3. Vernier scale reading will be how much? 3. Is that very very clear? Awesome. So now your final final reading, your final final reading is always, is always your main scale reading plus, plus your vernier scale reading multiplied by the least count multiplied by the least count vernier scale reading is 3 example the least count is 0.1 millimeters is 0.1 millimeters the main scale reading is 22 example millimeters so our final final reading will be 22.3 millimeters 22.3 millimeters is that clear my dear students is that clear my dear students awesome 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 very good so the reading is always the main scale reading plus vernier scale reading into the least count into the least count so this is one formula which we saw this was one formula which we saw and the other formula which we have seen is your reading your reading of vernier 
vernier caliper vernier caliper is always your main scale reading plus plus your vernier scale reading multiplied by your least count so this is also a very important formula now the last thing over here is the zero error why does this zero error come maybe there is some fault in the instrument when these clamps touch each other ideally the zero should coincide with zero ideally both the zeros should coincide in that vernier caliper but maybe it doesn't but maybe it doesn't that's the reason why you have something called as the zero error so when the jaws are clamped there are two possibilities there are two possibilities maybe the zero of the vernier is to the right the zero of the vernier is to the right of the zero of the main scale this is one possibility this is one possibility other possibility is that the zero is slightly behind a zero is slightly behind so this when the zero is ahead then it is called as positive zero error it is called as positive zero error if the zero is behind then it is called as negative zero error then it is called as negative zero error is this point very very clear my dear students is this point very very clear so if the zero of the vernier is ahead it is positive if it is behind then it is negative now whenever there is a positive zero error understand our vernier is already ahead the vernier is already ahead by some distance so whatever answer i get won't be correct whatever answer i get won't be actually correct so what you should do is what you should do is the actual length the actual length will be whatever reading you got whatever reading you got from before whatever reading you got from before so from that you will have to take away something because already some value is there imagine you have to measure the mass of somebody already when nothing is there it shows some 10 grams or let's say it shows 1 kg so if it already shows 1 kg when nothing is there so when you put something on it so you will take away 1 kg from it understood so if my if my mass is 75 it will show 76 why because it was already showing some value so you will take away 1 kg from it so that you get the actual uh, reading so the l actual will be the reading minus minus the positive zero error minus the positive zero error so when it is positive you subtract if it is a negative if it is a negative then the actual length will be the reading it will be the reading but when it is minus what will you do you will add it plus the negative zero error plus the negative zero error why negative zero error should be added imagine when nothing is kept on a weighing pan it is showing minus one kg so when i stand on it if it shows 40 kg that means my actual mass will not be 40 it will be 40 plus 1 it will be 40 plus 1 because when i was not standing on it it was showing minus 1 kg so it was showing negative value so when i add 1 kg then it will go to 0 when i add 40 kgs then it will go to 39 right understood so that's why you have to add one number i hope this is very very clear i hope this is very very clear understood so this is how you tackle the errors this is how you tackle the errors i have also put up uh, your printed slide over here vernier scale uh, least count is one main scale division minus one um, vernier, uh, main scale division minus one vernier scale division and vernier scale reading pl uh, plus the main scale reading minus the zero error is the actual reading these are the printed slides but i feel you will be more comfortable with these slides which have handwritten okay which have handwritten so i think it's a good time we solve some questions based out of this a vernier caliper has one millimeter marks on the main scale it has 20 equal divisions on the vernier scale 20 equal divisions on the vernier scale which match with 16 main scale divisions for this caliper what is the least count okay let's try to do this question everyone concentrate 20 divisions on the vernier scale 20 divisions on vernier scale is equivalent to 16 divisions of main scale but the vernier caliper has one millimeter marks on the main scale that means this will be 16 millimeters 
because each division is 1 millimeter so 16 divisions will be 16 millimeters now this is for 20 divisions of your vernier scale so therefore one division of vernier scale 20 divisions is 16 so one division will be 16 millimeters divided by 20 16 with 4 4 20 with 4 5 4 by 5 of a millimeter that is one division of vernier scale but i want to find the least count least count is modulus of one main scale division minus one vernier scale division one main scale division is clearly mentioned to be one millimeter so this is one one vernier scale division we just got it to be four by five one minus four by five will be just 1 by 5 of a millimeter 1 by 5 means 0.2 millimeters so hence the answer will be d option answer will be d option is that very clear my dear warriors very good many of you have given the right answer like i can see in the chat box keep it up keep it up moving on to the next question in a vernier caliper when the jaws touch each other the zero mark coincides if this is given what does it mean the zero marks in both the scales coincide means what there is no zero error there is no zero error my dear warriors is that right there is no zero error my dear warriors is that right correct oh very nice very nice now 10 vernier scale division matches the nine main scale divisions the length of the rod is measured using this so many divisions are uh, okay so first thing we should find the least count i believe without least count we should not proceed now it is clearly mentioned 10 vernier scale divisions coincides with nine main scale divisions correct and each main scale division is one millimeter <coughs> because it is clearly mentioned it is in millimeters so this is also like nine millimeters but that is 10 vernier scale divisions therefore one vernier scale division will be how much you divide 9 millimeters into 10 parts 9 millimeters into 10 parts so my dear students what's the least count going to be one main scale division minus one vernier scale division what is one main scale division well one main scale division was one millimeter was one millimeter one vernier scale division is 9 by 10 of a millimeter so hence what will you get you will get 1 by 10 1 by 10 which is 0.1 millimeters so that is the least count but that's not the question the question is what is the value of that length so the length the value the reading will be given by will be given by your main scale reading plus plus vernier scale reading multiplied by the least count what is the main scale reading look at it it shows 55 in main scale reading 55 in main scale reading so main scale reading is 55 millimeters because one division is one millimeter what is vernier scale reading reading it is clearly mentioned the eighth mark matches with the main scale the eighth mark matches with the main scale so that means vernier scale reading is 8 into the least count which is 0.1 which is 0.1 so won't it be 55 this was also in millimeters so 55.8 millimeter 55.8 millimeter which is option a very good very good so many of you answered it correctly awesomeness yes very nice now are you getting a hang of these questions shall we do one more question i hope you have smashed the like button if you are new to the channel i hope you have subscribed to the vedantu english channel as well very nice let's move on now to the next question coming up on your screen smallest division of the main scale of vernier caliper is one millimeter and 10 divisions coincide with nine main scale divisions okay so first thing we'll do is finding the least count my dear students standard procedure okay so 10 vernier scale divisions 10 vernier scale divisions coincide with coincide with nine main scale divisions nine main scale divisions and the division on the main scale is one millimeter so nine divisions will be basically nine millimeters will be nine millimeters so that is 10 vernier scale divisions so one vernier scale division will be nine divided by 10 of a millimeter so the least count which is one main scale division 
minus 1 vernier scale division will be 1 millimeter 1 millimeter is 1 main scale division 1 vernier scale division is 9 by 10 millimeters so i will get this as 1 by 10 which is again 0.1 of a millimeter which is again 0.1 of a millimeter but there is a catch when the jaws touch each other just the zero crosses on the main scale and second division coincides with the main scale oh there is zero error also so zero error is this positive or negative because it is given the vernier just crosses the zero that means won't it be a positive error won't it be a positive error my dear warriors how many of you saw that how many of you saw that very good if you saw that it is a positive error very nice this will be again same main scale reading plus vernier scale reading into the least count main scale reading it just crosses zero so zero vernier scale reading second division coincides with the main scale least count 0.1 so it will be 0.2 millimeters that is your zero error what is the reading that i am getting when i put the object reading what i am getting with the object you can see the vernier scale lies between 20 and 21 20 and 21 that means it has crossed 20 don't take main scale reading as 21 it has crossed 20 it's between 20 and 21 so main scale reading will be 20 millimeters vernier scale reading seventh division of the vernier scale so 7 into least count which is 0.1 so that will give me 20.7 millimeters but that's not the correct answer the final answer will be what is the length or what is where is the diameter the diameter will be 20.7 because it's a positive error you will subtract it positive errors are always subtracted so minus 0.2 so it will be 20.5 millimeter 20.5 millimeter which is option number a everyone with me very nice so now you have got how to do these questions based on vernier caliper right always check for coinciding divisions from that you find least count then zero error is given you find out whether it is positive or negative then the reading is given by you know mentioning which main scale reading is there and which division of vernier scale is coinciding with some division so put those values and then either you add or subtract depending on whether it is positive or negative error now let's go to the next instrument and the next instrument my dear students is none other than your micrometer screw gauge now in a case of a micrometer screw gauge my dear students this is also used to measure length but the accuracy the least count is much much better okay because this has usually a least count of the order 0.01 1.001 kind of a millimeter so you will see the least count is much smaller as compared to the vernier caliper and that's the reason why you get very precise readings using a micrometer screw gauge you have a u frame on a micrometer screw gauge you have a circular sleeve or on which there is a main scale and then there is a thimble which you can rotate which you can rotate you can see there is a circular uh, scale on it that is called as the circular scale because there are some markings some divisions on that circle as you rotate the circle rotates and it will also move forward if you rotate the other way around it will come backward if you rotate one way it will go forward so you rotate and you will see it will keep on ro rotating and it will keep on moving in one direction and on this main scale you can find some divisions and some markings that will give you the main scale reading on the circular scale you can see the markings here you will see the marking which will coincide on that flat line will be the circular scale reading will be the circular scale reading so how do i find out the least count of this how do i find out the least count of this the first thing that you should know is something called as the pitch of the screw gauge pitch of the screw gauge the pitch of the screw gauge is how much distance is moved by the circular scale upon the number of rotations number of rotations number of rotations meaning if it so happens that 
I rotate the circular scale two times, two times, and it moves, and it moves by, let's say for example, 0.4 millimeter. Then the pitch of the screw gauge is 0.4 divided by 2, 0.4 divided by 2, which is 0.2 millimeters. Meaning, how much does it move per rotation? When I rotate it once, it moves by 0.2 millimeters. That is the meaning of the word pitch. The meaning of the word pitch. That means when I rotate it once, how much does it move per rotation? Per rotation. Very nice. Now, the next thing is, once you get to know the pitch, once you know, get to know what is the pitch of it, then comes the least count. The least count of the screw gauge. The least count of the screw gauge the least count of the screw gauge is nothing but whatever is the pitch divided by the total circular scale divisions total circular scale divisions the total number of divisions on the circular scale meaning let's say let's say in this problem only on that circular scale on that circular scale there are some divisions right there are some divisions right maybe it starts with 0 1 2 3 like that and maybe it ends at 100 or basically last number will be 99 this number will be back to 100 0 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 8 9 10 like that 98 99 and back to 100 so you can see there are totally 100 divisions 100 divisions on the circular scale so so think of it this way one rotation it moves by 0.2 millimeters one complete rotation it moves by 0.2 millimeters so one division if i move it the circular scale if i move it by one division just one tick not that entire circle one small tick from one division to the next division so that will be the least count the least count will be 0.2 divided by 100 that is 0.002 millimeters is that understood my dear warriors is that understood my dear warriors in this case it will be 0 0.002 because the pitch was 0.2 millimeters pitch was 0.2 millimeters yes very good very good now the final thing and that is the reading the reading the final reading the final reading will be always just like before the main scale reading main scale reading plus plus your least count multiplied by instead of vernier here it will be circular scale reading here it will be circular scale reading so you have to multiply this with circular scale instead of vernier scale that's all so it is possible that something like this maybe it is given something like this one second this is let's say your circular scale this is your main scale once again put it in different colors and something like this and let's say over here it says so this is how it looks like example this is your circular scale this is your circular scale and like you can see this one over here is your main scale can you warriors tell me what will be the main scale reading in this can you warriors tell me what is the main scale reading in this come on quickly put it up in the chat box put it up in the chat box my dear warriors come on put it up in the chat box what do you think is the main scale reading put it up in the chat box yes very nice it has crossed 21 so yes main scale reading is 21 and what about the circular scale reading circular scale reading this is 40 41 42 you can see it is increasing over here so it is basically 42 example example i told you that the least count least count is 0 0.01 millimeters then what will be the reading my dear warriors what will be the reading my dear warriors the reading will be 
main scale reading which is 21 so 21 millimeters plus least count which is 0 0.01 multiplied by 42 millimeters so hence it will be 21.42 millimeters 21.42 millimeters that's all yes that's the answer everybody understood how to get the reading of a my uh, micrometer screw gauge using the main scale reading and the circular scale reading right so these were the formulas which you should know now one more thing comes over here and that is the zero error that is the zero error just like before if the zeros coincide if the zeros just happen to coincide on each other then there is no error when nothing is placed in between the zeros coincide then there is no zero error but imagine this it already shows some value on the circular scale you can see already there is some value which is shown maybe here it is 3 so because it is already showing some value that's why it is a positive zero error that's why it is a positive zero error and if it is behind if it is behind you can see it has gone on the negative side it has gone on the negative side this zero you can see it is showing some minus value basically it is the previous rotations value this is the previous rotations value then this is considered as negative zero error and just like before just like before you can add and subtract to get the final length the final length so the final length will be reading reading and if it is a positive error if it is a positive error you will subtract it positive zero error this will be your positive zero error and if it is negative then you will add it if it is negative then you will add it so this is your negative error negative error is always added positive error is always subtracted to find the length my dear warriors cool so keep this in mind let's solve some questions based on this so that you will get an idea a student measures the diameter of a small steel ball using screw gauge of least count this much the main scale reading is 5 millimeters and zero of circular scale division coincides with 25 divisions above the reference level if the screw gauge has a zero error of minus 0.004 centimeters then the correct diameter is so we have to find everything over here it is clearly mentioned what is the least count it is clearly mentioned what is the least count the main scale reading is given zero coincides with that means there is some zero error all right so let's start by finding what is the zero error what is the zero error okay uh, sorry yeah the zero error is basically zero error is basically minus 0 0.004 of a centimeter minus 0 0.004 of a centimeter i think over here what we need to do every calculation is in centimeters not in millimeters so be careful about it so just be little bit careful about it next thing what you need to take care of is the actual reading the main scale reading is this much and circular scale division coincides with 25 divisions above the reference level so the reading so the reading will be main scale reading plus least count into circular scale reading what is the main scale reading the main scale reading is nothing but five uh, millimeters it is nothing but five millimeters is that clear everybody with me the main scale reading is nothing but five millimeters very good next thing what is the least count least count is already given to be 0 0.001 centimeters what is the circular scale reading circular scale reading is 25 it is given the 25th division of the circular scale is coinciding so this is uh, you know into 25 so how much will this be this will be 0 0.0.025 centimeters every answer is given in centimeters so this millimeters also i'll write it as 0.5 centimeters so this will be nothing but 0.525 centimeters 0.525 centimeters which is i think oh 
uh, there is one zero error also i have to add that or subtract it we'll take care of it as well so first of all the reading that i got was 0.525 centimeters because the zero error is nothing but negative negative so when i find the final answer the final answer what i will have to do i'll have to add it i'll have to add it so whenever the error is negative i will add it so my dear students i'll have to add 0 0.004 centimeters that will make it 0 0.529 centimeters which is option d which is option d is that clear is that clear everyone very nice many of you have written down d as the correct answer very good so zero error was negative that's why we added if this was plus i would have subtracted okay catch was some things were in millimeters something were in centimeters the moment i saw least count is in centimeters i realized that okay since options are also in centimeters we have to keep everything in centimeters not in any other uh, units let's go to the next one let's go to the next one okay everybody get ready for this all right screw gauge with a pitch of this much circular scale with these many divisions is used to measure the thickness of a sheet before starting it is found that the two jaws when they are in contact 45th division is in line and the zero is hardly seen okay zero error is there what is the thickness if main scale uh, reading is this much and 25th division coincides all right let's start by finding the least count of this least count is always the pitch upon the circular scale divisions what is the pitch the pitch is 0 0.5 millimeters how many circular scale divisions are there 50 divisions this by this by cancels so this will become 0 0.01 millimeter that is the least count how many of you wrote the least count is 0 0.01 millimeters yeah the question size does not matter don't worry about the question size what matters is how are the steps the steps are very straightforward the questions look very very big don't get scared by that next thing what is the zero error because it is clearly mentioned that the zero is barely visible that means the zero error is negative that means the zero error is negative you can hardly see it so my dear students the 45th division coincides on the main scale line the 45th division coincides on the main scale line what does that mean what does that mean the main scale reading is 0 least count is 0 0.01 into into what should i do over here into what should i do over here come on think about it what should i do over here should i multiply it by 45 should i multiply it by 45 because 45th division of the main scale coincides no that is the catch that is the catch look over here carefully when you have negative zero error you can see this is zero and if you go behind if you go behind those are negative values those are negative values or from the previous rotation or from the previous rotation so when this 45 comes over here when that 45 comes over here basically from zero you are behind by five units you are behind by five units ideally the zero should have coincided but because the zero has gone ahead so you are getting a negative value over here that means you are behind by five units if there were 50 divisions so technically technically it is not it is not 45th division this 45th division will become the fifth division understand that let me mention this very very clearly over here so if you have your circular scale if you if you have your circular scale and this is your 45 then 46 47 48 49 50 50 will become again back to zero again that one two three four five six like that again it will come to 45 like this and this is how the main scale reading is this is how your main scale is so this 45 technically is five readings behind is basically five readings behind this is why you are getting that negative error is this concept understood is this concept understood my dear warriors yep 
for positive error it was not a problem for negative error it becomes a headache because you are going in the previous rotation you have gone by five units behind okay so how much is the zero error it is basically 0 0.05 what was this this was uh, millimeters so this is also in millimeters so that is your zero error what is your actual reading that you get what is the actual reading that you get obviously main scale reading plus least count into circular scale reading main scale reading main scale reading the main scale reading is 0.5 millimeters so 0.5 is here least count is 0 0.01 0 0.01 multiplied by circular scale reading circular scale is 25 so into 25 so this will become 0 0.5 plus 0.25 which is nothing but 0.75 millimeters 0.75 millimeters but don't mark this but don't mark 0.75 because there was a zero error so the final length or final answer the final answer won't be 0.75 minus because it is negative it will be plus so negative errors are added positive errors are subtracted so plus 0 0.05 which will make it 0 0.80 millimeters so that is the final answer 0 0.80 is option number a is that understood my dear students is that understood my dear students yes option number a very good yes so these kind of questions are very common in your competitive exams you will see many many type of questions are there the size is very big but if you follow the steps finding the least count then finding zero error then finding the reading then adding or subtracting the zero error you will reach the final answer okay i think now these things are much much easier for all of you and if you feel that I have made it easier by solving these questions give me a thumbs up and smash the like button I'm seeing the like counts here make sure you're smashing the like button as well right let's move on let's move on to the next one let's move on to the next one and that is basically your simple pendulum that is basically your simple pendulum now in case of a simple pendulum in case of a simple pendulum experiment the aim is to find you know the dissipation of energy by plotting a graph between the scale of amplitude versus time okay let's understand this let's understand this you take anything which is hanging you take anything which is hanging and leave it it will go back and forth it will go back and forth like a pendulum but because in reality there are negative forces dissipative forces dissipative means which suck away the energy you will see slowly the oscillation will become smaller and smaller and it stops so earlier the amplitude will be huge so the energy will also be huge and then slowly you will see that the amplitude becomes smaller and smaller and then it stops so if you happen to plot the graph of how the amplitude you know changes with time how the amplitude changes with time you will see it looks something like this you will see it looks something like this this is time this is your amplitude you will see that the amplitude varies like this this is your amplitude you can see the amplitude earlier was good then it became smaller and smaller amplitude became smaller and smaller in fact you can also plot the graph of energy with respect to time the graph of energy of the oscillation with respect to with respect to time then that graph also looks very very similar sorry yeah the energy of the graph with respect to time actually it will look very very similar it will look something like this first it will have maximum energy then the energy slowly goes off it will have maximum energy then the slowly the energy will go off and it will tend towards zero so uh, here i can say the energy tends to zero as time becomes very large that means time tends to infinity this is how the energy graph looks like so you can see the energy is not constant you can see the energy is not constant why is the energy not constant the reason is the energy is not constant since since mechanical energy is lost due to frictional 
और विस्कस फोर्सेस फ्रिक्शनल और विस्कस फोर्सेस दीज फोर्सेस आर प्रेजेंट एवरीवेयर अराउंड अस नो मैटर व्हाट यू डू यू कैन नॉट गेट रिड ऑफ दीज फोर्सेस यू कैन नॉट गेट रिड ऑफ दीज विस्कस और ड्रैग फोर्सेस एंड दीज विस्कस फोर्सेस दीज विस्कस और डिसिपेटिव डेसिपेटिव फोर्स इज गिवन बाय एफ डी विच इज माइनस बी टाइम्स ऑफ वी वी इज वेलॉसिटी वॉट इज बी बी इज बेसिकली कॉल्ड एज योर डैम्पिंग कॉन्स्टेंट बी इज बेसिकली कॉल्ड एज योर डैम्पिंग कॉन्स्टेंट सम कॉन्स्टेंट इफ बी इज वेरी लार्ज दैट मीन्स द फोर्स फॉर रिटार्डिंग इट इज वेरी वेरी लार्ज If B is small, that means the resistive, the dissipative forces are very, very less. Why is it called dissipative? Because energy is lost. Energy is not constant. Energy is slowly lost to the surrounding. So you are dissipating it. That's why dissipative force, drag force, damping force, whatever. Okay, you can also call it as damping. You can also call it as damping force. Is minus B times of V. V is the velocity. More the speed, more is the damping force. more the speed more is the damping force now it so happens that it so happens that the amplitude which decreases over time it follows this equation the amplitude is a not into e to the power minus bt by 2m e to the power minus bt by 2m this is the exponential decay form why am i saying exponential decay because you might have seen maybe in first order kinematics of chemistry first order kinematics of chemistry or even in radioactivity law n is some constant e to the power e to the power minus something into t e to the power minus something into t and there also the number of elements in the radioactivity it reduces reduces or even in first order kinematics the concentration reduces with time like this so this is also a very very similar equation the amplitude keeps on reducing and becomes close to zero as time progresses what is b b is the damping constant b is nothing but your damping constant what is m m is nothing but the mass m is nothing but the mass is that clear okay now now if this is true then we also know that initial energy Energy of any SHM is half k a naught square, is half k amplitude square, isn't that right? So if I ask you, if I ask you what is the energy at any given time, you will be like, sir, it is half k a square. Okay, but wait a minute, what is what is a? A is this whole thing, a is this whole thing which is a naught into e to the power minus b t by two m. right whole square so what will i get i'll get half k a not square into because i'm squaring it it will become e raised to minus b t by m 2 2 cancels half k a not square half k a not square is e not so therefore i will get e is equal to e not e not into e to the power minus b t by m minus b t by m this is also this is also decaying this is also decaying this is also uh, reducing exponentially this is just like first order kinematics equation where that quantity reduces 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 till it becomes zero my dear students yep so you will see that this graph of energy with respect to time is like this perfectly matches and you can see the amplitude was large here and slowly it kept on reducing and finally it tends to zero so my dear students understand understand over here this is the amplitude this was the amplitude then 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 this was the amplitude amplitude is the extent till which it goes back and forth back and forth so slowly the amplitude is reducing so this particular curvy nature was showing how the pendulum is going left and right then slowly the left and right amount is reducing reducing till it becomes a big fat zero till it becomes a big fat zero is that clear yes now 
lot of students have this confusion sir damped oscillations is deleted you know that's what is funny in the syllabus damped oscillations and lc oscillations are also not there in the syllabus but this experiment is there so if at all a question comes i feel we should be on the safer side then you need to know this equation you need to know the energy equation you need to know energy is half k square in shm that though you will anyway study you should know how the graph looks like that's all that is important what kind of questions can come i have put the same thing in the printed slide look at this look at this to be on the safer side we are doing these questions because it is very funny because on one side in shm damped oscillations is deleted but here they have put it in experiments a simple oscillator undergoes amplitude damped oscillations and a graph is plotted between square of amplitude square of amplitude versus time if the amplitude reduces to half in 10 seconds then if the amplitude reduces to half in 10 seconds then the uh, energy would have dropped by how many times at 10 seconds and what time will the amplitude be one fourth of the initial value okay observe this carefully it is clearly mentioned that the amplitude reduces to half in 10 seconds we know amplitude function is a naught e to the power minus some constant into time doesn't matter bt by 2m b is a constant 2 is a constant m mass is a constant so i'll assume it as a number constant which is c because the amplitude becomes half in 10 seconds half in 10 seconds that means a naught by 2 is equal to minus e to the power minus ct sorry is equal to a naught into e to the power minus ct a naught a naught cancels this is this will become 1 by 2 is e to the power minus ct e to the power minus ct so minus power means i can bring it down also minus power that means i can also bring it down also right we can do all those calculations but i don't think we'll be needing it for now one of the questions is when will the amplitude be one fourth of the initial when will the amplitude be one fourth of the initial so if i use this equation if it becomes one fourth of the initial then a naught by four will be same term a naught e to the power minus ct a naught e to the power minus ct but wait a minute e to the power minus ct okay i don't know the time i don't know the time one more thing it became half in 10 seconds that means this time over here this time over here i can just put it as i can just put it as just put it as 10 seconds over here so this will become nothing but 10c e to the power minus 10c is basically half e to the power minus 10c is basically half interesting so why can't i write it as why can't i write it as e to the power minus c whole raised to 10 e to the power minus c whole raised to 10 is that right everyone because at 10 seconds the amplitude became half at 10 seconds the amplitude became half so from this i got an idea from this i got an idea that e raised to minus c whole raised to 10 is half that means that means e raised to minus c will be 1 by 2 will be 1 by 2 1 by 2 whole raised to 1 by 10 1 by 2 whole raised to 1 by 10 i'm taking 1 by 10th root 1 by 10th root on both sides so over here can i not do this can i not do this this will be a naught into e to the power minus c raised to t e to the power minus c raised to t this a naught this a naught got cancelled so 1 by 4 is equal to e raised to minus c is nothing but 1 by 2 whole raised to 1 by 10 whole raised to 1 by 10 and this whole thing raised to t and this whole thing raised to t this whole thing raised to t everybody with me uh well if you go by this method you will you will get to the answer but after a long time instead i will tell you a simple trick instead i will tell you a very simple trick you want to do this you can do it but it will take you a long time instead the trick is to remember the principle of radioactivity i know it is not there in the syllabus but still you will learn it for the sake of this problem you will still learn it for the sake of this problem if you have 
a concentration n or quantity n and it is decaying exponentially like this then understand understand after exactly half life half life the quantity becomes original by 2 whatever was the original it will become half of that it will become half of that that means n naught by 4 after two half lives after two half lives oh now the problem looks very simple to me the quantity became half after one half life it became one fourth after two half lives this half life only was given to me as 10 seconds so obviously two half lives will be 20 seconds hence the answer will be for this particular question at what time will the amplitude be one fourth will be one fourth the answer will be nothing but 20 seconds that will be a much much easier is that clear is that clear yes it is much much better it is much much better so you know the way they have deleted the portions also if you know those deleted concepts it will be helpful for you to solve the questions if they ask you when does it become one eighth one eighth means half of that so it will take more 10 seconds so 30 seconds so after 30 seconds it will become n naught by it it will become n naught by it. so that is a much easier way to solve the question then if the amplitude reduces to half in 10 seconds the energy would have dropped by how many times in 10 seconds we know that energy is half k a square so if the amplitude becomes half times the square of half square of half will become one fourth so if rhs becomes one fourth energy will also become one by four times so the energy energy would have dropped by how many times in that time 10 seconds one fourth of the times and how will the graph of a square versus time look like it will look like this it will look like this is that clear my dear warriors exactly this curve exactly this curve amplitude energy remember even energy is proportional to a square energy is proportional to a square so you will see that the graph will anyways look like this only very good yes all right this is the first time on the english channel please understand that yeah no english channel has done this <laughs> right okay come on let's move on to the next one okay coming up on your screen and that is meter scale principle of moments meter scale principle of moments okay so in this the simple funda of torque is used nothing more nothing less you have a meter scale you have a node mass you have an unknown mass you balance the meter scale and then whenever it is balanced you mark the readings and once you mark the readings you will be able to use the equation of torque to find out the unknown mass or to find out you know the length at which it balances itself like for example over here this is the fulcrum this is the pivot over here there is a known mass which is at some distance from the fulcrum or the pivot and there is unknown mass or known mass at another point and it is at some distance from the pivot so when it is balanced when it is basically balanced understand that the net torque will be zero that means all the torques anti-clockwise will balance all the torques clockwise all the torques clockwise so if the anti-clockwise torque if you see this mass is trying to rotate it anti-clockwise this mass weight is trying to rotate it anti-clockwise understand that the torque will be r r over here is the distance from the pivot point which is x into basically mg will be equal to here r is this much the force over here the mass over here tries to rotate it clockwise so the torque produced the torque produced will be nothing but y into that unknown weight so solving this you can find the value of w which is nothing but x m g divided by y is that understood my dear warriors that's all okay i hope this is clear i hope this is very 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 clear cool so the torques need to be balanced so r cross f or anti-clockwise will be r cross f clockwise that's all that's all so let's have a look at some questions 
let's have a look at certain questions what is this particular question observe carefully it says there is a meter scale which weighs uh, which has two weights 12 grams and m grams uh, i think 12 grams is here this is not 10 this is not 10 this is 12 i believe 12 grams and unknown mass m at 10 centimeters yes at 10 centimeters and 80 centimeter at 80 centimeter so that another unknown mass will be m grams will be n grams okay 50 grams is the weight of the meter scale find the unknown mass so that the meter scale stays balanced now if i hinge it or pivot it here the weight of the meter scale does not matter because the weight itself passes through the pivot point so there is no torque no torque due to no torque due to 50 gram weight of the scale weight of the scale the scale also has some weight remember that but if the fulcrum was somewhere else at 40 or 60 then that 50 grams will give a torque that you will have to count it here that won't matter all right so what are the different distances from the pivot point this is 10 this is 50 so how much will this distance be this will be 40 centimeters this will be 40 centimeters from 50 to 80 how much will this be this will be 30 centimeters so the torque this way should balance the torque the other way torque this way will be r cross f which is 40 cross 12 grams is equal to if you are wondering sir what about the units don't worry if I put centimeters on left hand side, I will put centimeters only on the right hand side. So 40 centimeters into how much grams? 12 grams. 12 grams is equal to torque from the other side will be m r cross f again. R is 30. 30 centimeters into m grams. Now 0, 0 cancels. m will be 4 into 12 by 3. 0, 0 has cancelled. This goes this this will become 4 so it will become 16 grams so the mass will be nothing but how much 16 grams is that right everybody with me understood or clear -o? very good everybody has put it up yes awesome 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 okay uh, unable to write the question don't worry even if you are unable to write the question we'll be giving the pdf later on so that later on you can see the question you don't have to copy down all the questions okay we'll be giving you all the questions yeah very simple kind of questions come on this there is nothing great on this answer given her was wrong don't worry next is next experiment is finding the young's modulus using seals method so in this what happens is you hang a wire you hang a wire and you have some basic mass on it or some standard mass on it and besides it you hang the same wire but with an extra mass on it and see how much does it extend how much does it extend based on how much it extends you can find the modulus of elasticity meaning the young's modulus so seals method is used to measure is used to measure the young's modulus of the wire which is hanging why do you need two wires why do you need two wires reason is sometimes it might happen that due to temperature variations the rod or that wire might extend naturally because of thermal expansion so to offset that amount so as to neglect the expansion due to thermal but only due to the load that's why you have another wire which is exactly identical which is exactly identical and with respect to that you measure how much is the extension with respect to that you measure how much is the extension because if the temperature on that day is more both the wires will extend both the wires will extend if you add load on one side from that uh, test weight on the test weight side then there will be more extension so noting down the difference you can get what is the total extension only because of the load only because of the load is that clear why this happens so you can see there is a control wire control wire means standard wire there is a test wire where you actually put the weight so when you add the weight you can see it goes down a little and noting down the difference between these two wires you get the extension in the wire only due to the weight not the thermal expansion so there can be a question why is the control weight or the control wire used 
it is to offset the effect of so the control wire so the control wire is used to offset is used to offset the effect of effect of thermal expansion that is the line that you will put thermal expansion as simple as that great so what is the final formula that you get for young's modulus because we know young's modulus is stress by strain and stress is the force by area strain is nothing but extension by original length so force is nothing but mg area is nothing but pi r square r is the radius of the wire x is the extension l is over here so that is your young's modulus that is your young's modulus mgl by pi r square x same thing mgl by pi r square small l one and the same thing sometimes there can be questions on errors on this questions on error or percentage error in these type of uh, formulas where you might be asked to find what is the relative error or percentage error in the young's modulus in that case what you will do write it in the power form write it in the power form so this will become m raised to 1 g raised to 1 l raised to 1 uh, r raised to minus 2 x raised to minus 1 the whole thing divided by pi which is a constant each of them might have errors each of them might have errors so you will get many terms of relative error here so first is mass the power is 1 so 1 into delta m by m will come if gravity has error then 1 into delta g by g will come if the length of the wire has an error so 1 into delta capital L by L will come if radius has an error don't take the negative value always the positive value so 2 times the delta r by r will come excess power minus 1 always take the mod value so 1 into delta x by x will come that's how you find the relative error that's how you find the relative error that's all okay okay how we get 40 centimeter in the meter scale example that was very straightforward where did it go this is at 10 centimeter mark this is at 50 so 10 and 50 what is the difference 40 right so from the from the from the pivot point how far are you 30 this was 80 centimeter mark from 50 so what is the distance between 50 and 80 30 i hope that is very very clear is this point clear my dear students in fact you should remember general formula for errors if a physical quantity is some constant into p1 raised to alpha p2 raised to beta uh, p3 raised to p3 raised to gamma then delta p by p relative error in p constant does not matter first power will come into delta p1 by p1 the next power will come into delta p2 by p2 doesn't matter whether you are below or on the top always take the positive values delta p3 by p3 so this is the error formula which you will generally use for all kinds of questions which you will generally use for all kinds of questions okay so, so the same thing has been mentioned here it is used to find the young's modulus of that wire let's have a look at some question coming up on your screen in a method of seals experiment the diameter is measured with least count this much and is found out to be this much length this much okay least count is that much weight is suspended okay extension is given so least count is this much find the error in the measurement of young's modulus so exactly whatever we had to we had seen over here same thing has come as a question you can see right over here so start off with the formula of young's modulus it is mg length divided by pi r square into extension so the error in y percentage wise will be mass does not have an error notice 50 newton is a fixed value there is no error in the mass so ignore that mass even g does not have error because it is not given the total weight is only mg which is 50 newton so no error in mass no error in g did you understand it so these two quantities these two quantities you can see there is no error there is no error whatsoever so don't even think of writing them length has some error so delta l by l pi is a constant don't bother r's power is 2 so 2 times delta r by r plus delta x by x this whole thing because we want to find it in percentage so into 100 into 100 
द लेंथ द लेंथ इज मेजर्ड विद द लीस्ट काउंट ऑफ पॉइंट वन सो द एरर इन द रीडिंग विल बी पॉइंट वन द लेंथ वैल्यू इज हंड्रेड एंड टेन सो आई एम जस्ट गोइंग टू पुट हंड्रेड एंड टेन ओवर हियर टू टाइम्स टू टाइम्स डेल्टा आर बाय आर लुक एट इट लुक एट इट द डायमीटर इज मेजर टू बी दिस मच विद लीस्ट काउंट ऑफ दिस मच लेट मी टेल यू ओवर हियर सिंस सिंस डायमीटर इज टू टाइम्स ऑफ रेडियस देर फोर डेल्टा डी बाई डी इज ऑल्सो डेल्टा आर बाय आर द टू इज अ कॉन्स्टेंट इट विल नॉट कम ओके सो डेल्टा डी बाई डी इज डेल्टा आर बाय आर सो द रिलेटिव एरर इन डायमीटर विल बी सेम एज द रिलेटिव एरर इन रेडियस so even if diameter is mentioned don't worry you can also use it for radius so what is that delta r by delta uh, delta r by r least count is 0.001 whole thing divided by 0.05 that's what it is plus the extension the extension is measured to be this much least count is this much so what is the least count point 001 and extension is 0.125 the whole thing into 100 that will be in percentage you solve this you must get it as 4.89 percentage 4.89 percentage that's what it is is that very clear my dear students okay i hope this is clear i hope this is very very clear uh why mg has zero error because did they say 50 newton plus minus some percentage did they say the weight is this much with a least count of this much no because they did not mention anything about the weight whether there was error whether there was some percentage error whether there was some least count in the measurement hence you will assume it as no error hence you will assume it as no error yes units are same yes that's the reason why we are dividing centimeter 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 so when i divide it no problem there is no problem at all okay is that very very clear is that very very clear so if you know all these chapters it becomes a little bit helpful for you know understanding these concepts else if you have no idea what young's model is it then it will be little bit tough then it will be little bit tough okay now surface tension of water capillary rise method this is also another experiment which is uh, generally asked or given where you put a capillary tube inside a liquid you will see that the liquid rises up by some height and that happens because of the phenomena of surface tension surface tension is nothing but a property of the liquid where the surface tries to minimize itself it tries to reduce its area as low as possible if it so happens if it so happens that you dip a pipe in a liquid you dip a pipe in a liquid and you find that the meniscus that means the surface of the liquid is concave up then you will see that the liquid inside that pipe rises up by some height this type of liquid has an acute angle of contact this is called acute angle of contact acute angle of contact you can see uh, with the surface this curved nature that theta which is there is less than 90 degrees the best example for this is water when you pour it in a glass tube water in a glass tube it makes an acute angle of contact and the water goes up this is the height by which the water goes up whereas liquids like mercury liquids like mercury you will see that their curvature is convex up the surface of the liquid which is also called as meniscus is convex up this is concave up this is convex up such liquids you will see will go down there is a dip in it so here if you notice the angle of contact is more than 90 degree so the angle is obtuse the angle is obtuse so it will be dipping the best example is mercury in glass tube mercury in glass tube similarly you also see that there are some liquids which are perfectly flat theta is 90 degree it neither goes up neither goes down so the height rise or dip is zero 
example for this is water in a silver container water in a silver container it neither goes up neither goes down it is exactly at the same level that's the difference between the two okay so there are three kinds of liquid acute angle obtuse angle and 90 degree angle depending on the angle of contact the water or the liquid will go up or go down or will not go up or down at all that angle of contact is the angle which is made by the liquid and the solid surface angle made by the liquid and the solid surface inside the liquid you can see that right over here it is made inside the liquid whatever is the angle between the liquid and the solid liquid and the solid surface inside the liquid that is the meaning of angle of contact you don't have to worry about what is angle of contact in case you do not know only what is surface tension then you'll have to go back to the entire chapter read from beginning what is surface tension what is cohesion what is adhesion what is uh, you know all these things so if you have not read that chapter then this might sound little bit out of the box okay so it so happens that the height rise or the dip in the liquid inside that small tube that small tube is called as a capillary capillary means a small tube which has an opening on both sides so the liquid can easily pass through it that is a capillary is given by 2s cos theta by rho g r 2s cos theta by rho g r where that s is nothing but your surface tension of the liquid s is nothing but the surface tension of the liquid theta is nothing but angle of contact angle of contact what is r it is nothing but the radius of the capillary tube the radius of the capillary tube this radius this radius which is there that is the radius of the capillary tube is that okay the radius of the capillary tube g is gravity rho is density h is the height by which it goes up or falls down now it so happens that for the same liquid if you use different different sizes of different different sizes of radius or the capillaries you will see the height rise or fall will be also different reason being since h is 2s cos theta by rho g r h is inversely proportional to r h is inversely proportional to r that's the reason why if you draw a graph of h versus r h versus r it will look something like this you can be asked a question on that you can be asked a question on that yes you can be definitely asked a question on that in fact you know i think there is a question on this no okay you can be asked a question on draw the graph of height rise in the capillary versus the tube sizes capillary sizes more the radius less the height less the radius more the height so this thin tube height rises more wide tube the height rises going to be less is that right everyone cool very nice all right let's move to the questions then a capillary tube of a uniform bore is dipped in a water which rises by 7 centimeters find the radius if the surface tension is this much now usually usually the angle of contact for water and glass is not just less than 90 but it is very very close to zero degree this is a value which you must remember the angle of contact is like one degree five degree two degree like that very very small so because it is so small i will almost assume it as zero degree meaning the water surface will almost be like this over here and you can see the angle made at this point is almost like zero degree is almost like zero degree so now the question is find the what do you have to find find the radius of the capillary so height is 2s cos theta by rho g r so r will be 2s cos theta by rho g into h now 2 as it is surface tension i don't know cos theta will be cos of 0 cos 0 will become 1 later on density of water is 10 to the power 3 g value is 10 height is 7 centimeter so 7 into 10 to the power minus 2 what about surface tension observe carefully 70 dynes per centimeter is 70 one dyne is 10 to the power minus 5 newton 
and per centimeter, one centimeter is 10 to the power minus 2 of a meter. So minus 2 minus 5 becomes minus 3 with 1 0 will become minus 2. So 7 into 10 to the power minus 2 Newton per meter. So I will put over here 7 into 10 to the power minus 2. 7 into 10 to the power minus 2. This will give me the radius. 7, 7 will cancel all those things. How much will the answer come out to be my dear warriors? How much will the answer come out to be my dear warriors? Just check it out. This one zero, this will cancel. I think it should be coming out as just 0.2 millimeters or something. It must be just coming out. Yes, it is coming out as 0.2 millimeters. It is just coming out to be 0.2 millimeters. Is that okay, my dear warriors? Is that okay, my dear warriors? Understood? Oh, clear? Oh, can we move ahead? Yes. Awesome. Awesome. Very nice. Very nice. So these are the kind of questions you can expect in your surface tension height rise in capillary tube. Now the next kind of question. Yes. Capillary is basically a small tube with an open bore. So the liquids can pass through it. Capillary. It's a small tube. Both sides are open. Okay. Water can go in and come out from the other side. That's all what a capillary is. All right. Coefficient of viscosity. Determination of coefficient of viscosity by dropping a ball in a tall container. When the raindrops fall from the clouds, they come down at a constant speed. They come down at a constant speed. That constant speed is called as the terminal speed. That constant speed is called as the terminal speed. So, what happens is, initially when you drop a ball, drop a ball, it accelerates, it accelerates and it starts from rest. But as soon as the speed increases, once it acquires speed, you will see that there will be a viscous force which comes into play. That viscous force will give it a reduced acceleration. Reduced acceleration. So the acceleration will not be as before. It will be having some lesser value. As it goes more down and down, you will see that the viscous force will become large. The viscous force will become large. And then you will see that the acceleration will become zero. And that's the reason why, because it is not accelerating, the velocity will just become a constant value, which is called as terminal velocity or speed. Terminal velocity or speed. Earlier it starts accelerating because of gravity. Gravity pulls it down. It starts going down. As soon as it starts going down, viscous force starts acting and the speed increases viscous force also increases increases till they all balance each other and you see there is no net force so there is no net acceleration and that's why it comes down at constant speed it comes down at constant speed eventually that is called as terminal velocity the formula for terminal velocity is 2 by 9 pi r square uh, sorry 2 by 9 r square g uh, sigma minus rho by by your eta 2 by 9 r square all right very very important 2 by 9 r square right uh, g sigma minus rho by eta where this sigma is your density of that ball which is being dropped this is density of the liquid density of the liquid g is g r is the radius this is nothing but the radius of that ball what is this eta this is your coefficient of viscosity coefficient of viscosity coefficient of viscosity this will give you the terminal speed as simple as that very very simple no terminal speed is not 6 pi eta rv that is wrong Ro uh, roshan yeah be careful yeah. So when terminal speed is achieved, when terminal speed is achieved, remember one thing, remember one thing, when terminal speed is achieved and the ball is going at a constant speed, at constant speed, that means the acceleration is zero, then the weight is being balanced by the buoyant force and the viscous force and the viscous force. Weight is mg. 
बॉयट फोर्स इज वॉल्यूम इन टू डेंसिटी ऑफ द लिक्विड इन टू जी विस्कस फोर्स इज सिक्स पाई ईटा आर वी वी इज दैट वेलॉसिटी विच इज टर्मिनल वेलॉसिटी वेरी वेरी इंपॉर्टेंट विस्कस फोर्स इज सिक्स पाई ईटा आर वी दिस इज एक्चुअली योर स्टोक्स लॉ बॉयट फोर्स इज वी रो जी वॉल्यूम इन टू डेंसिटी इन टू जी एंड द वेट विल बी जस्ट एम जी वेट विल बी जस्ट एम जी यस कीप दीज थिंग्स इन माइंड keep these things in mind okay very very important let's see plot the graph of speed versus time for a ball falling in a viscous fluid this has come so many times in many competitive examinations plot the graph of velocity versus time how will it look like first it will be zero speed increases increases but then it slowly stops increasing it will reach something called as the terminal velocity so the graph is a curved line because initially it increases but then it won't increase so much because acceleration is reducing so you can see that by drawing the tangent here the tangent will be like this here it will be like this here it will be like this here it will be like this finally it will be zero remember the tangent the tangent's slope over here is nothing but acceleration since it is dv by dt so the slope is reducing slope is reducing finally you can see a is zero here first there is large acceleration small 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 and then becomes zero that's the reason why the graph is a curved line got it very very important next one if a ball is dropped has a terminal speed v and then the ball of double its size has a terminal velocity of how much ball double the size has a terminal velocity of how much straight forward question my dear students velocity is nothing but 2 by 9 R square g sigma minus rho by eta. So velocity is proportional to R square. Velocity is proportional to R square. So think about it. If radius is doubled, the square of it is made four times. So if R h s becomes four times, even the L h s should become four times. Hence the answer must be four v. Hence the answer must be four v. Very nice. Great. i hope this is very very clear thank you for reminding me to have water <clears throat> okay let's move to the next one coming up on your screen speed of sound resonance tube finding the speed of sound using resonance tube setup now in this particular setup what happens is you use a tuning fork you use a open pipe you dip it inside water usually and you take out the tube slowly and place your ear and try to hear a loud sound by smashing the tuning fork somewhere and you know the tuning fork is hit somewhere so the tuning fork vibrates so when the vibration occurs you will see the sound will go inside and once it goes inside because it encounters a water surface over here that sound which travels inside will get reflected back here so now you have two sounds one sound which is going down one sound which is reflected up because you have two waves going in the opposite direction they will interfere and create a standing wave they will create a standing wave and the standing wave will be in resonance only under certain conditions only if it matches certain lens or if it is having certain frequency only then it will you know encounter a uh, resonance when these two waves which is incident from the tuning fork and the one which is reflected back from the water surface only then they will encounter interference which is producing resonance in that standing wave so for that to happen what are the conditions well first thing because this part this part will behave like a closed end closed end hence there must be a node over there second thing this is an open end this is an open end that means there must be an anti node over there because the sound which is incident from the tuning fork tuning fork this is incident this is incident is getting reflected from the closed end like this this is reflected together together will produce 
a standing wave standing wave and for resonance for resonance the condition is the frequency should be odd times velocity of the sound divided by four times your effective length this is the formula for resonance my dear students frequency of the tuning fork is odd times velocity of the sound by four times the effective length this f is the frequency of your tuning fork tuning fork very very important this is the formula first thing you should know about this this odd number decides harmonics if odd number is one if the odd number if the odd number is one this is the first harmonic first harmonic then the next odd number is three so that will be the third harmonic third harmonic then the next odd number is five so fifth harmonic so only odd harmonics are present in case of a pipe which is closed and open on both sides closed and open on both sides keep that in mind now understand how this works how this works i'm going to draw it for you rather than showing you ready-made diagrams when the pipe is completely immersed in the liquid when the pipe is completely immersed in the liquid let me show the liquid level like this you hit the tuning fork you will not hear anything there will be no resonance so you slowly take out that pipe slowly take out the pipe out of the water you might not hear resonance as you take it out more as you take it out more maybe the first resonance might occur when you see a standing wave being formed this particular way this particular way here you have an anti node here you have a node this is exactly at lambda y4 this is your first harmonic this is your first harmonic where you have an anti node and a node over here you take it out further you take it out further maybe over here maybe over here something like this then you might get the next harmonic slowly something like this yes this is anti node again a node again anti node and again a node so this wavelength is lambda by 4 lambda by 4 lambda by 4 so 3 lambda by 4 this is your third harmonic third harmonic see if this is very very clear why is this lambda by 4 because when you draw one wavelength then then you will see you will have two lobes you will have two lobes this is one wavelength so if you just consider if you just consider only this much part of this this is obviously lambda by 4 divided into four parts that's why this is lambda by 4 not lambda by 2 so like that two halves and one half so three such parts are there so three lambda by 4 is that clear why is it lambda by 4 and three lambda by 4 is it clear why is it lambda by 4 and 3 lambda by 4 okay next one you will get 5 lambda by 4 fifth harmonic 7 lambda by 4 seventh harmonic so on and so forth now now the length which is above the water surface if i call it as l1 here length which is above the water surface if i call l2 over here the problem is the anti node is not exactly here it is formed slightly outside it is formed slightly outside the reason for that is something called as the end correction is called something as the end correction so when you have an open pipe when you have an open pipe the anti node is not formed exactly here it is formed slightly outside it is formed slightly outside this is where you get your anti node anti node from the open pipe from the open side of the pipe this distance where the anti node is formed is also called as the end correction end correction and that end correction is 0.3 times the diameter 0.3 times the diameter of the pipe so that correction has to be used to actually find the effective length of the pipe if you remember over here 
if you remember over here i had put length effective that means it's not the actual length which you measure you have to also take into account the end correction you have to also take into account the end correction so my dear warriors over here you will see that there will be some end correction e over here there will be some end correction e over here so technically i can say length 1 plus e is lambda by 4 here length 2 plus e is 3 lambda by 4 subtracting the 2 <coughs> this minus this what will i get what will i get okay just take bigger number minus the smaller number just take the bigger number minus the smaller number if i subtract the two so subtracting subtracting what will i get observe carefully observe carefully l2 minus l1 i'll get l2 minus l1 e and e will cancel and here i'll get 3 lambda by 4 minus lambda by 4 which is 2 lambda by 4 which is just lambda by 2 but lambda is nothing but lambda is nothing but speed by f speed by frequency so that is nothing but l2 minus l1 so rearranging i'll get f is v by 2 times l2 minus l1 this formula is also very useful to find the frequency of the tuning fork if speed of sound is given and the two lengths for first harmonic and third harmonic consecutive harmonics first and third are the immediate harmonics consecutive harmonics are given to you this length and that length without knowing the end correction you can find the frequency you can find the frequency is that right everyone okay so one formula which you must know is this formula in general okay but here you need to know the end correction and the other formula is this one where you know the first harmonic and third harmonic lengths end correction gets cancelled when you subtract and we derived this so you should know that end correction is 0 0.3 times the diameter this is also one thing which you must know let's have a look a tuning fork of some frequency tolerance one percent is used in resonance column method the first and the second resonance are measured at this and this length find the maximum permissible error of speed of sound okay so we already have seen the formula for frequency which is v by 2 times of l2 minus l1 formula for frequency is v by 2 times of l2 minus l1 so therefore speed of sound will be 2 times f times l2 minus l1 now this l2 minus l1 let me call it as the length difference as x let me call it as the length difference which is x so therefore think about it when i try to find the relative percentage error in the speed of sound when i try to find the percentage error in the speed of sound this number 2 will not make any difference find the relative error in frequency find the relative error in frequency and also just add to it the relative error in that term x relative error in the term x multiply by 100 you will get it percentage okay so now do i know the frequency percentage error yes the percentage error in the frequency is just one percent how much is the percentage error in the difference of the lens that is the tricky part that is the tricky part let me just create a duplicate of this okay And tell you how much is delta x by x observe carefully it's given the lengths are 24 and 74.0 do you see the decimal places is still first decimal so that means the least count is 0.1 centimeter till first decimal accuracy is there so the least count or the error is 0.1 centimeter very good now when i try to find x which is nothing but l2 minus l1 meaning meaning 74 minus 24 74 minus 24 that's going to be 50 50 centimeters that will be what x is but remember the errors the errors are always added the errors are always added even if you are subtracting so delta x will be 0.1 plus 0.1 which is 0.2 which is 0.2 centimeters that will be the error in the difference of the lens errors are always added 
so when i find delta x by x it will be 0.2 divided by 50 and then i try to find percentage that means multiply by 100 so 50 100 becomes 2 so it will become 0 0.2 into 2 which is 0.4 percent 0.4 percent that is the relative error in the difference of the lengths percentage wise so put that 0.4 over here put that 0.4 over here hence the final answer that you will get is 1.4 percent many students make a mistake here they think that the error will still remain 0.1 that is the most common mistake and you will get a completely wrong answer understood clear so hence the answer for this is 1.4 percent moving on to the next question coming up on your screen in a resonance tube experiment to determine the speed of sound in air a pipe of diameter 5 centimeters is used the air column in the pipe resonates with a frequency 500 when the minimum length of the air column is 15.5 find the speed of the sound in the air at room temperature this word minimum length is 15.5 you know what does this mean why the minimum length is given look at this diagram the first resonance first harmonic happens in this manner so that minimum length l1 is what is given to you this l1 is given this is not third harmonic or fifth harmonic which is given the first time the resonance occurs is for the first harmonic when lambda by 4 is the uh, length of the uh, you know uh, what do you say standing wave which is produced lambda by 4 which is the length of the standing wave which is produced oh so this data because it is given to me as minimum length that means it is first harmonic it is first harmonic okay question is find the speed of sound uh, in air we know the formula for frequency is odd times v by 4 length effective so therefore v will be f into 4 into length effective divided by the odd number 4 is 4 frequency of the tuning fork is given to be 500 great length i don't know odd number is 1 because first harmonic now what is that length effective well that length effective is the actual length plus the end correction what is the actual length it is 15.5 centimeters plus 0.3 times the diameter diameter is also given 0.3 times the diameter everything in centimeter so this will become 1.5 plus 15.5 that's 17 centimeter or 17 into 10 to the power minus 2 meters so the effective length becomes 17 into 10 to the power minus 2 solve this and see how much do you get solve this and see how much do you get my dear students come on four fives are 20 and then into 17 that's 34 and with one zero so 340 meters per second 340 is option c for captain shreyas c is captain for captain shreyas very nice is that understood everyone what a brilliant question it is okay you have used the end correction also and we have used uh, harmonics knowledge also by using this data this word was very important minimum length means first harmonic okay now specific heat capacity type of questions specific heat capacity experiment in this kind of experiment what happens is basically you have one hot body one cold body you mix that hot and the cold body and let them achieve an equilibrium after some time you will see that whatever heat is lost by the hot body will be the heat which is gained by the cold body till thermal equilibrium is achieved this is basically your principle of calorimetry principle of calorimeter there will be one thing which will be losing energy one thing which will be gaining energy and their loss and their gain will be equal because the heat can't go anywhere outside to the surroundings or nor can it come inside so you can see over here this is a calorimeter which is basically an insulating device it prevents any heat flow inside and outside there is a thermometer to see what is the temperature 
if the temperature is changing that means it has not yet reached equilibrium once the temperature stabilizes that's when it has reached thermal equilibrium okay and here is where you also have a stirrer so that you allow the liquids or the solid the uh, whatever particles are there to mix till uh, they exchange heat enough and attain their thermal equilibrium state in these kind of questions usually the formulas for heat that you might need is m s delta t where s is specific heat capacity specific heat capacity and other formula which you might need is ml which is uh, where l is nothing but your latent heat l is nothing but your latent heat l is nothing but your latent heat this is also sometimes very very useful so my dear warriors my dear warriors remember these two formulas for heat absorbed or heat released m is mass l is the latent heat m is ma uh, mass this is specific heat this is change in the temperature these two formulas might be used for your heat lost and heat gained calculations i will show you a question on this it's nothing different you don't have to be scared about calorimeter question these kind of questions can come there is a metal block of some mass some temperature is in this much water at 25 final temperature is this much heat capacity of water is this much determine the specific heat capacity of the metal block okay let's try to solve this thank you so much sunita thank you and those of you who are joining a little bit late it's still okay you can watch from any experiment whatever experiments you have missed you can watch it later on so for this particular thing identify who is the cold object the cold object is 150 grams of water at 25 degrees celsius the hot object is this metal block at 150 degrees celsius the equilibrium temperature is 35 that's it so i can say the heat gained will be equal to equal to the heat which is lost by the hot body heat lost by the hot body mass of the hot body 250 grams into specific heat capacity i don't know that into delta t final and initial these are the values so the change in the temperature is 150 minus 35 don't put 35 minus 150 okay because you have to put only positive values we are talking about heat lost heat lost okay not the heat exchange net so don't put it with sign it will be a positive value heat gained who will gain the heat the cold body how much is the mass 150 grams how much is the specific heat capacity of water it is 4.18 joules per gram degree celsius change in the temperature from 25 it went to 35 so 35 minus 25 everything you know over here everything you know over here the only thing you don't know is s solve it and find the value of s i think it should come out close to 0 0.2 joules per gram degree centigrade 2 joules per sorry 0 0.2 joules per gram degree centigrade that's what you will get after solving it's nothing but a calculative question after this cool yep shall we go ahead my dear students now to the next one the next experiment coming up on your screen next experiment coming up on your screen okay next experiment is meter bridge next experiment is meter bridge meter bridge is used to find unknown resistance it is based on the principle of wheatstone's method of balancing resistors or capacitors wheatstone's method of balancing resistors or capacitors so what happens in wheatstone what happens in wheatstone is basically you have one resistor another resistor one more resistor another resistor okay maybe some current is coming in from here going out from here this is r1 this is r2 this is r3 this is r4 then if you put up a voltmeter if you put up a voltmeter or ammeter in between it might show some reading but if the reading is zero then it is called as null deflection null deflection and then this bridge this is called as a bridge this bridge is said to be balanced this bridge is said to be balanced and when that bridge is balanced then r1 by r2 will be r3 by r4 
R3 by R4. This is the concept of Wheatstone's bridge which is balanced. If it is unbalanced, then it might show some reading. When it is balanced, then it will not show any reading in the voltmeter or the galvanometer. Now, the same logic is used over here. You can see there is one resistor here. There is some unknown resistance here. There is some resistive wire here. You can see a voltmeter or a galvanometer is connected between two points. Actually, this is one resistor. This is another resistor. This is another resistor. And this is another resistor. And you can also see a voltmeter or a galvanometer connecting these two points. So this is also a Wheatstone's bridge, just like, just like over here. If I know R3 by R4, the ratio, then if R1 is known, I can find R2. If R2 is known, I can find R1. So if I know this ratio, R3 by R4, I can find R1 if I know R2. I can find R2 if I know R1. Now this ratio of R3 by R4, if you notice over here, if you notice over here, R3 by R4 will be proportional to the length. This resistance as a whole, whatever the resistance is, it is spread across 100 centimeters. So a part of it is R3, a part of it is R4. So since resistance is proportional to the length, this R3 by R4 will be nothing but L3 or basically L uh, L by or L, uh, I can just call it some, let's say this, I call it as L3. Let's say I call this as L4. I can just say it is nothing but L3 by L4 because the resistance is directly proportional to the length. So measuring these lengths, I can easily get the answer. Measuring these lengths, I can easily get the answer. So over here, R1 is basically R. R1 is basically R. R2 is basically that unknown resistance X. Similarly, L3 and L4, what are they? L3 is this length. L3 is this length. And L4 is basically this length. This is known, this is known, this is known. You can find out this. That's all the concept is in meter bridge. This galvanometer is first tried and tested here. If it shows reading, then you move this point somewhere else. If it still shows reading, then again you move the point. If it still shows reading, again move the point. If it shows zero, then you stop and only then measure it. That is called as your null deflection length. Null deflection length because there is no deflection only in the galvanometer. That's the idea behind it. Is that okay? Very good. Let's have a look at some questions. In a meter bridge when the resistance in the left gap is 2 ohms, an unknown resistance is there in the right gap. Okay. So in the left gap, if the resistance is 2 ohms, unknown resistance is there in the right gap. And the meter bridge is at 40 centimeters from the zero end. That means this is 40 centimeters. Because it is 1 meter, 1 meter is 100 centimeters. Naturally, the remaining part will be 60 centimeters. That's when you get null deflection over here. That's the first criteria, that's the first piece of information. From that, 2 by x will be 40 by 60. 40 by 60 is 2 by 3. So, 2, 2 cancels. So, x will be 3 ohms. The unknown resistance is how much? 3 ohms. But that's not the question. The question is only something else. On shunting the unknown resistance with 2 ohms, the shift of the balance point on the bridge is meaning you take this 2 ohms as it is the unknown resistance which was 3 ohms unknown resistance which was 3 ohms you shunt it shunt it means put another resistor in parallel you put another resistor in parallel that parallel resistance is itself 2 ohms then you will get a new length then you might get a new length maybe i will call it this as x so the remaining will be 100 minus x is that right when you balance it and you again balance it you might get a new length okay so what is that change in the length we can find it out for that first figure out how much is this effective resistance since they are in parallel shunt means parallel remember that shunt means parallel so the parallel resistance will be r1 r2 upon r1 plus r2 two threes are six six by five ohms 
6 by 5 ohms. So hence over here I can say x by 100 or I can say uh, yeah x by 100 minus x this by this will be this by this. So 2 by 6 by 5 2 by 6 by 5. Now it's just simple math. 2 5 is 10. And in fact, I can write it like this. 5 by 3 will be x by 100 minus x. Solve this. Cross multiply. So 3x will be 500 minus 5x. So 8x will be 500. So x will be 500 divided by 8. 500 divided by 8. Which is how many centimeters, my dear warriors? Which is how many? Yes, some of you already posted it. Very nice. 62.5. Very good. See this. Very nice. 62.5 centimeters. Very nice. But the question is not even to find that. The question is how much is the shift? Read the question carefully, my dear students. Find the shift. So the shift is 62.5 minus original length was 40. Minus 40 which is 22.5 centimeters, which is 22.5 centimeters. Is that clear? Is that clear, my dear students? Very good. Moving on to the next one coming up on your screen. Resistance using Ohm's law. This is one of the easiest thing. I mean, you have done this back in the day in your ninth or 10th grade, where you take a battery, you take a switch, you use an ammeter, you use a voltmeter across a resistor measure the voltage across the resistor find the current through the resistor and then plot a graph and then verify ohm's law very very straightforward very very straightforward so in this kind of thing we'll see that the voltage will be directly proportional to the current or voltage will be i into r that's the only formula which is needed nothing great about it there is a rheostat when the word rheostat is used what it actually means is a variable resistance variable resistance why do i need that because when i add or subtract resistances then the circuit characteristic changes more or less current will pass so when the current changes voltage will also change and that's exactly what you have to do you will you know have voltage on one side current on one side and then you will set it at one particular position and then you will see what is the current and what is the voltage. Then you will remove it and put it on some other side. You will change the resistance. You will see the new voltage will be there, new current will be there. Again change the resistance, new voltage, new current will be there. You slowly try to join all these lines, sorry points with a line. It should pass through the origin. If it doesn't pass, make it pass. It has to. That's how you show voltage is proportional to current and from the slope you can measure the resistance. That's all. So you'll see the graph will be a straight line whether you draw current versus voltage or voltage versus current. Doesn't matter. So just to give you some example, question will be find, find the resistance and you can have two kinds of graph. One is current versus voltage. One is voltage versus current. And let's say the graph looks something like this. This is 2. This is 6. This is this is 2, this is 6. Example. In each case, can you find, in each case, can you find what is the resistance? All right. So all you need to do is check the slope or just put V is equal to IR. Nothing is there in this problem. When the voltage is 2, the current is basically 6. So R will be 1 by 3 of ohm as straightforward as that and over here again using V is equal to IR when the voltage is 6 the current is 2 so therefore R will be 3 ohm so understand you need to check whether it is current versus voltage or voltage versus current or else you might get exactly different answers reciprocals of them right awesome yeah it is kind of summaries of all the chapters and if you know the chapter, you can do it very easily. Right. Moving on to the next one. Ha, huh, this one. Half deflection method. Some of you might know it. Some of you might not have done this. But 
hopefully this was done in your college or school in this half deflection method what happens is the idea is to find the resistance of a galvanometer and something called as the figure of merit figure of merit any galvanometer any galvanometer is nothing but a resistance because there is a coil inside it that coil has some resistance that is called as the resistance of the galvanometer there is also something called as figure of merit meaning it's the quantity of current which is required to pro move it by one division remember the galvanometer scale has some divisions has some divisions on it if previously the arrow mark was here now you want to shift it the needle to here so to create this shift how much extra current you need so that is called as your figure of merit that is called as your figure of merit so from one division to the next division to change the needle's position how much more current you need that is called as the figure of merit understood oh clear oh great now in order to find that what is done let me explain you the setup let me explain you the setup first what is done is you just have one galvanometer connected to the battery with some small resistance can you see that battery is there some resistance is there galvanometer is there okay the galvanometer will show some deflection galvanometer will show some deflection you note down the deflection this theta is basically your deflection is that right everybody with me now you add one more resistor in parallel this s stands for shunt shunt or basically parallel resistance now you keep changing this resistance change it try to use different different values of resistances till the deflection here becomes theta by 2 this is basically called half deflection this is basically called half deflection note down that resistance s what is s the resistance for which you get exactly half deflection without any parallel resistance you get some theta deflection let's say it was showing 24 units for 12 units how much resistance you need to add that's all great then when you get that just find the resistance of the galvanometer using this formula see what is the formula galvanometer resistance is r s by r minus s r is this resistance s is this resistance so r s by r minus s if you know this formula directly you can solve the question else the derivation for this is very 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 lengthy don't do that next thing this is the figure of merit formula this is the figure of merit formula this is the figure of merit formula figure of merit this is resistance of galvanometer formula emf you should know divided by r plus g r plus g not s r plus g into theta theta is the deflection theta is your deflection do you see that theta over here that is that deflection which you uh, basically uh, get over here this theta is your deflection which you get over here so when you have no resistance in shunt or parallel whatever deflection you get initially that theta you can put over here it can be in radians it can be in degrees or it can be in just divisions also either way oh uh, no this is a breakless class i don't think it will take more time we have already reached the 12th experiment there are only some few more experiments which we have to discuss so i don't think we'll need more time okay lot of time right yes all right all right cool so let's solve a question based on this in an experiment to determine the resistance of a galvanometer by half deflection method the circuit emf is 25 half full deflection oh my god i think the two words have came together this was not half the full deflection is three divisions in one set of reading uh, if r is equal to 10 ohms s is 4 ohms then the resistance of the galvanometer is okay so the resistance of the galvanometer just use this formula resistance of the galvanometer i'll just use g symbol what is that formula 
आर एस बाय आर माइनस एस इट इज आर एस बाय आर माइनस एस वॉट इज द रेजिस्टेंस विच इज एडेड सपरेटली द रेजिस्टेंस विच इज एडेड सपरेटली दैट इज बेसिकली टेन ओम्स वॉट इज द शंट रेजिस्टेंस शंट रेजिस्टेंस इज दिस पैरल रेजिस्टेंस दैट इज गिवन टू बी फोर ओम्स बाय टेन माइनस फोर सो इट विल बी फोर्टी बाय सिक्स विच इज ट्वेंटी बाय थ्री ओहम्स दैट इज द गैलोनोमीटर रेजिस्टेंस वी फाउंड दैट आउट ट्वेंटी बाय थ्री एवरी वन वेरी नाइस बट दैट्स नॉट ऑल वी कैन ऑल्सो फाइंड द फिगर ऑफ मेरिट इफ इट वॉज आस्ट फिगर ऑफ मेरिट फिगर ऑफ मेरिट वॉट इज द फिगर ऑफ मेरिट फॉर्मुला लुक एट दिस ई बाय आर प्लस जी थीटा इट इज नथिंग बट ई बाय आर प्लस जी इन टू यूर थीटा वॉट इज ई एम एफ ट्वेंटी फाइव वर्ल्ड वॉट इज रेजिस्टेंस टेन वॉट इज जी वी कैलकुलेटेड हियर विच वॉज ट्वेंटी बाय थ्री वॉट इज थीटा थ्री डिविजन आई थिंक यस थ्री डिविजन थ्री डिविजन वॉज दर राइट सो नाउ सॉल्व दिस 25 by 30 plus 20 is 50. 50 by 3 into 3. 3 3 cancels. This will become half. So half ampere per division. That is the figure of merit. It's like your sensitivity only. It's like your sensitivity only. Right? Great. Very nice. Moving on to the next one. that is finding the focal length using your displacement method this is what is there in your syllabus where you have an object like a candle or a light source you have a lens and on the other side you have a screen whose where you measure or where you get the image of this particular source or the object you adjust the lens in such a way that you get the image on the screen you adjust the lens in such a way where you get the image on the screen guess what there is not one but there are two positions for which you get images on the screen once here once there so you keep moving the convex lens till you see the image keep moving it till you again see the image so you will see two times you will see the image two times and that's what will help you find the focal length of the convex lens it is called as the displacement method it is called as the displacement method because once the lens position is here once the lens position is here so you are displacing the lens from here to here which is let's say x which is let's say x that is why you are calling it as the displacement method if you know the total distance between the source and the screen let's say it is capital d then the focal length is given by d square minus x square by 4d d square minus x square by 4d that is the answer that is the answer is that okay all right all right very good one more thing which you should also know here is that the images that you get on the screen if you measure the image heights height of the image in the first case multiplied by height of the image in the second case if you multiply it and then put it inside the root you will get the height of the actual object so the root of height of image 1 height of image 2 in both the cases in both the cases will be the height of the object this is also a very important formula this is also a very very important formula keep these things in mind so let's have a look at some questions based on this an object and a screen are fixed at a distance d a converging lens is placed a real image is formed on the screen for two positions for two positions their separation is how much basically x is asked if you know the formula directly you will get the answer d square minus x square by 4 by 4d shift it over here so 4df is d square minus x square so x square will be d square minus 4df taking d common it will become d into d minus 4f so x will be root of d into d minus 4f so d into d minus 4f and you will see that is option number b it is option number b straight questions can come direct questions 
yes you can use sunlight and also find the focal length there is no harm in that okay now over here again one more question you can see d is given x is given and the question is what is the focal length so very direct very simple questions you will get on these uh, particular arrangements so my dear warriors again the formula that you have to use again the formula that you have to use is f is d square minus x square by 4d d is 75 x is 25 4 into d which is 75 so take 25 common over here so 25 square 25 threes are 75 so 3 square minus 1 square whole thing divided by 4 into 75 solve this because this is 25 into 25 into 3 square is 9 9 minus 1 is 8 divided by 4 into 75 25 goes with 75 3 times 4 goes with 8 2 times so you should get this as 50 by 3 yes 50 by 3 centimeters correct that is the answer so 50 by 3 centimeters understood clear direct questions can come on this if you get these questions you should be very happy directly you will solve it so experimental physics is all about knowing the formulas knowing the concepts and it is always better you know the chapter from before if you don't know the chapter from before it is going to be little difficult prism concept again prism concept again over here in practical physics the next experiment the plot of the angle of deviation versus the angle of incidence of a triangular prism a very very standard graph where you let the light enter at some angle it refracts refracts two times and it finally deviates by some angle and you plot that deviation for different different angles of incidence that graph ends up looking like this for different angles of incidence the deviation looks like a curve which is symmetric and there is an angle when the uh, deviation is minimum there is an angle of incidence when the angle of deviation inside the prism is the least so what is the meaning of this deviation the light was going like this but because it bent it ended up going like this so you can see this is the angle by which the light has deviated this is the angle by which the light has been deviated is that right so if you plot that delta versus incidence you will get a symmetric curve with a minimum at a particular angle now it so happens that for minimum deviation do you see this angle of incidence do you see this angle at which it emerges out these both happen to be equal these both happen to be equal so you can see that for delta minimum angle of incidence is angle of emergence number one angle of incidence is angle of emergence not just that do you see the internal angles here do you see the internal angles here if these two are equal naturally these two will also be equal these are the internal angles of refraction internal angles of refraction so you will also see r will be equal to r prime in fact they both will be a by 2 because because r plus r prime is actually a r plus r prime is the angle of prism is the angle of prism because r and r prime both are equal so r plus r will be a or 2r will be a that means r will be a by 2 that's the reason why i said r r prime both will be equal and it will be a by 2 is that okay that is another thing which you must must know not just that you should also know in general deviation is incident angle plus emergent angle minus the angle of the prism minus the angle of the prism all these are standard formulas deviation is incident plus emergent minus a in case of in case of uh, minimum deviation i and e will be equal also at minimum deviation you get the refractive index to be sine of angle of prism plus minimum deviation by 2 whole thing divided by sine of a by 2 that is what you get the refractive index to be that is what you get the refractive index to be i hope this is very very clear yes awesome now going back over here you can also use snell's law 
at this and this interface. So mu refractive index is sine of angle of incidence in air which is i. In air it is i. Inside glass it is r. So sine of r which I can also write sine of angle of incidence in air which is e upon sine of angle of incidence in the glass which is r prime sine of r this is also applicable your snell's law your snell's law is also applicable these are the most important formulas for this uh, you know particular experiment if you know these formulas then it becomes very very easy look at this for an equilateral prism the deviation is same for 55 and 35 the minimum deviation is how much refractive index is how much angle of incidence for minimum deviation is how much graph is how much okay let's try to do this first of all if i draw the graph it will be very easy for me to understand this this is angle of incidence this is your deviation the deviation is same for two angles if you look at this particular graph generally you will get the same deviation for two angles whatever is their left side is also their right side it is a symmetric graph about this line whatever is their left is also their right so there are two angles for which you are getting the same deviation that's what it says so if i happen to draw this graph which is like this i am getting the same deviation for two angles what is it 35 degrees and 55 degrees so think about it when will minimum deviation occur when will minimum deviation occur exactly at the midpoint of these two because it is symmetric so what will be that value it will be 35 plus 55 divided by 2 35 plus 55 divided by 2 which is nothing but 90 by 2 which is nothing but 45 degrees so this will be 45 degrees that is the angle of incidence and for for minimum deviation we know i is equal to e therefore i is equal to e is equal to 45 degrees is that right everyone everybody with me so did we find the minimum deviation yes we can find that minimum deviation using some refractive index uh, formula i think uh, that refractive index needs to be given or minimum deviation needs to be given without that i think one of them is missing without that we will not be able to uh, find it okay i think one of them is uh, missing over there mm, i think minimum deviation needs to be given over here okay let me just let me just put up over here let's say minimum deviation let's assume something example is 30 degrees this needs to be given without that we will not be able to because nothing else is given over here so all right all right so with this i think we can now find the refractive index because mu is sine of a plus minimum deviation by 2 upon sine of a by 2 we can use that yes we can use that right and no minimum deviation is not 45 angle of incidence is 45 be careful mu i do not know sine of a angle of prism because it is equilateral prism angle of prism is 60 degree so this will be 60 plus minimum deviation is 30 divided by 2 whole thing divided by sine of a a which is nothing but 60 degree by 2 so 60 plus 30 90 90 by 2 45 so it will be sine 45 by sine of 30 which is 1 by root 2 by 1 by 2 which is root 2 so i just got refractive index as root 2 we just got refractive index as root 2 then what else is remaining what is that angle of incidence for minimum deviation that is also done very nice and uh, we drew the graph also that is also done yes so we have done everything in this you have done everything in this clear my dear students clear my dear students very nice very nice great 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 okay shall we move ahead now shall we move ahead all right all right let's see 
the next one refractive index of a glass slab using a traveling microscope this is one of the easy ones one of the easy experiments very nice everybody wrote the final answer for the previous question here we know that when you look inside a swimming pool the surface of the pool appears closer that is the concept of apparent depth or apparent height that happens because of refraction phenomena now you might have also seen this if you take a glass slab and place it in front of something that surface appears little bit closer so over here what happens is what happens is that my dear warriors you uh, let's say for example are viewing a point through a microscope you are viewing a point through a microscope there is a point or a dot or a particle through a microscope you are seeing it now if by chance you put a glass slab in front of it then what will happen that particle that point which is marked will no longer be visible there it will appear little bit closer it will shift by some amount because of which this microscope which was there you will have to move it little bit up exactly by the amount which it has shifted exactly by the amount which it has shifted to focus it again earlier the microscope was you know making sure whatever rays come over here they are focusing at the proper point but now if you use a glass slab then that point will appear at some other place so to focus it again without disturbing it you just have to move it little bit up so that you accommodate for it so that's the whole concept of measuring the refractive index using a microscope for a glass slab we know that we know that if an object if an object is over here at a depth of at a depth of let's say t t being the thickness of the slab t being the thickness of the slab when seen from here that object's position will appear here this is called as the apparent depth this is called as the apparent depth this is where the image of the object is formed the distance by which the object shifts to form that image that is delta x which is also called as the shift which is also called as the shift in the position so when you are seeing from here the object which is on the other side will appear little bit closer to you that apparent height formula is apparent height formula is actual depth in this case actual depth divided by refractive index in this case the actual depth is t you can see it is t centimeters or t meters inside refractive index is mu hence when i find that shift delta x which will be total thickness minus the h apparent will be t minus t by mu taking t common it will be 1 minus 1 by mu whole thing into t that is your shift which is produced that is your shift which is produced so if you are earlier focusing on o directly you will have to shift by that much amount to focus on it properly again to focus on it properly again so the shift so the apparent apparent shift produced produced by the slab is same as the distance by which distance by which the microscope has to be moved has to be moved to focus again to focus again on that particular image properly okay everyone let's solve some questions let's solve some questions look at this everybody concentrate everybody concentrate now it's clearly mentioned a microscope is focusing at a point a microscope is focusing at a point okay marked on the piece of paper marked on the piece of paper now you take a glass slab you take a 
glass slab okay you take a glass slab of thickness 12 centimeters so because of which what will happen this microscope will have to be moved little bit it has to be moved little bit by delta x question is if that microscope shift position shift distance sorry is given by is given by 4 centimeters you have shifted the microscope by 4 centimeters question is what is the refractive index of the glass slab question is what is the refractive index of the glass slab because now the marking will also appear somewhere else on that piece of paper on that piece of paper right it will appear somewhere else only it will appear slightly at a different place so here just use the shift formula you will get the answer delta x is thickness into 1 minus 1 by mu delta x is 4 thickness is 12 1 minus 1 by mu so this will become 1 by 3 because 4 by 12 is 1 by 3 1 minus 1 by mu so 1 by mu is 1 minus 1 by 3 which is nothing but 2 by 3 reverse it reciprocal will be 3 by 2 so refractive index is 1.5 so 1.5 is the refractive index clear how to solve this very nice very nice my dear students awesomeness next one on pn junction next one is on pn junction uh, where you draw or understand the characteristics of the pn junction diode in the forward and the rear bias remember a pn junction is where on one side you dope it with a pentavalent impurity and the other side you dope it with a trivalent impurity so to make one side electron excess one side hole is in excess so the p side has holes in excess the p side has more number of holes than the number of electrons and the n side has more electrons than the number of holes than the number of holes right and then you join them together to make it into a pn junction to make it into a pn junction and when that junction is formed there are two things which happen there are two things which happen there is a diffusion current and drift current both things happen remember that both things happen so when you have a pn junction pn junction you will see that you will see that the electrons from the n go towards the p the electrons from n go towards the p and the holes from here go towards this side because of which you will see that there is a diffusion current which is set up this way diffusion current diffusion current set up from p to n if negative charges go here positive charges go here current's direction is the flow of the positive charges at the same time at the same time you also have another current another current in that potential barrier which is created that potential barrier which is created that happens to go from exactly n to p this is called as the drift current this is called as the drift current when there is no bias when there is no bias then the diffusion current is exactly equal to the drift current hence the net current is a zero when there is no bias both the currents are equal and opposite and the net current and the net current is basically zero keep this in mind okay i hope you are remembering all these things i hope you are remembering all these things so when you put it in forward bias when you put it in forward bias what happened forward bias means p is connected to positive p for positive n for negative that is forward then you will see that the diffusion current is going to exceed the drift current you are going to see p is positive p is connected to positive n is connected to negative more current will go exactly in the direction of the bias so you will see that the diffusion current the diffusion current grows whereas the drift current stays as it is so because of which you will see that there is a large net current large net current over here in this direction you will see the diode now allows the current to flow but it does not allow immediately 
when you slowly increase the voltage which is applied across pnn when you slowly increase the voltage across pnn first the current does not increase so much it increases by a marginal amount after a point it shoots up why does that happen is because there is a barrier there is a barrier which is created there is a barrier which is created so when the voltage is slowly increased that barrier that barrier that barrier becomes smaller the barrier potential the barrier becomes smaller and smaller as the voltage is increased there is a barrier which is created which prevents the flow of the holes and the electrons so after a certain voltage often called as the knee voltage the knee voltage you will see the barrier is broken the barrier is broken and then after this if more voltage is applied then you will get a large current then you will get a good flow of current this is very very important okay in the exact opposite scenario in the exact opposite scenario where you connect it in reverse bias means p to the negative n to the positive p to the negative n to the positive you will see that the diffusion current does not grow in fact the diffusion current becomes smaller the diffusion current oops the diffusion current the diffusion current becomes smaller and the drift current it stays as it is nothing happens to it drift current stays as it is okay the drift current stays as it is that's the reason why you will see that there is a net current which is in the drift direction not in that direction in the opposite direction remember in dip, in forward bias it was from positive to negative p to n in reverse bias it is from n to p all right it is going like this so there is a small net current often this current is so small it is also called as the leakage current it is also called as a leakage current it is also called as a leakage current so i can say it stops current it stops leakage is very small this leakage is very very small so it stops the current in the other direction that is why it is called as a diode because in one direction it allows the current to flow in large amounts but in the other direction when it is biased it does not allow too much current so it is like a one way traffic of current that's why it is a diode if you draw the graph of voltage versus current if you draw the graph of voltage versus current observe this carefully this is voltage this is current when you are on the right hand side it is forward bias because voltages are positive in number on this side you will see voltages are negative that's why it is a reverse bias that's why it is a reverse bias now notice what happens when the voltage is increased the current increases over here in case of forward bias but not so much till it reaches something called as a knee voltage till it reaches something called as the knee voltage look at it exactly what i had mentioned here where the barrier is broken after the barrier is broken there is a large current exactly what you would expect you can see suddenly the current shoots up suddenly the current shoots up everybody with me very nice awesome this so this is very very important and you should remember what is the knee voltage for germanium and silicon okay i think it has been no it's fine so 0.7 for silicon and 0.3 for germanium 0.7 for silicon and 0.3 volts for germanium after these voltages the current increases by a good amount in the reverse bias notice how the current is small for a long time this current is very very small in the reverse bias that is why it is called as leakage current notice how the currents are in micro amperes micro is very very small current micro is very very small current and there comes a voltage after which it does not grow breakdown occurs that is called as the zener breakdown 
After this, no matter what you try to do, the voltage can't be increased. The current changes, yes, but the voltage does not change. So you maintain that voltage. That is actually the application which is used for Zener diode in reverse bias. So in reverse bias, it happens, but in forward bias, you don't get a saturation like this, no. In reverse bias, you get a saturation over here where you can't further increase the voltage beyond this point. Current can increase, that's okay, but voltages can't be changed. So if I use this property and I use the diode in this region, what I will ensure is the voltage never grows beyond a point. That is what is the concept which is used in Zener diode. We connect it in reverse bias and you use it in the breakdown region. So the voltage remains the same and it is going to act like a regulator, meaning it does not allow the voltage fluctuations to happen. So this is the current voltage characteristics of a PN junction diode. You should know it in and out. You should know it in and out. This is a symbol of a diode. This arrow mark tells you in which direction it allows the current. In this direction, it will block the current. It will block the current. Okay? Keep all these things in mind. Cool. So, let's have a look at some questions. The reading of the ammeter of a silicon diode in the given circuit is. It's a silicon diode. Silicon, remember, will have a knee voltage of 0.7 volts. Of 0.7 volts okay so this will be 0.7 volts over here so out of 3 volts 0.7 volts is dropped how much will be remaining think about it how much will be remaining 2.3 2.3 volts will be remaining over here everybody with me 2.3 volts will be remaining here question is what is the current or the ammeter reading well if you want to find the current use v is equal to ir for the resistance Voltage is 2.3, current I don't know, resistance is nothing but 200 ohm. So I will be 2.3 divided by 200, which is also 23 divided by 2 into 1 by 1000, the decimal I have shifted, which is 11.5, 1 by 1000, I can write it as milliamperes, 11.5 milliamperes, yes, that is C for Captain Shreyas, that is C for Captain Shreyas. Yeah, negative y-axis, is it microamperes? You can write it in a different scale, okay? You can write it in a different scale also. But if you write it in the same units, milliamperes and milliamperes, here the currents will be large. Here it will be so small that you will hardly see it away from the minus x-axis. It will almost be touching it. Here it is highly exaggerated. It is very, very close to the negative x-axis. Next question. So for that Zener diode guys, let's have a look at what Zener diode does. Like I said, Zener diode is used to regulate the voltage. To regulate, to regulate the voltage. Okay. It is operated, operated in the reverse bias. It is operated in the region of breakdown reverse bias breakdown voltage reverse down uh, bias breakdown voltage meaning if i have a zener diode the symbol for a zener it's a normal diode it's just that it is doped really heavily that's all that's the symbol normal diode does not have these two lines when you draw these two lines it becomes a zener diode now, no matter how much voltage you apply to this, no matter how much voltage you apply for apply to this, if you measure the voltage across the Zener diode, if this is your output voltage, and maybe you know you have applied some input voltage. If I tell you the breakdown, if I tell you the breakdown occurs at 10 volts, then if you plot a table, if you plot a table of the input versus the output, input versus the output, if the input voltage is 12 volts, the voltage across the Zener diode will still be 10 volts. If the input voltage is 15 volts, then also it will be 10 volts. If it is 20 volts, then also it will be 10. 
if it is 21 volts then also it will be 10 volts always it remains 10 volts ha the only problem happens if it goes below 10 volts say for example it is 9 volts then this won't be 10 this might be i don't know maybe 8 volts or something just giving an example okay so it will not be but point is it will not be 10 volts so you have to ensure that the input voltage is above the breakdown voltage then the voltage across the zener diode remember will remain constant use this graph use this graph where did it go in the reverse bias no matter what you try to do across the zener diode the voltage can't change the voltage can't change it has to remain same so you might be wondering sir what happens to the remaining voltage what happens to the remaining voltage well if i if i write on the other side the voltage across the resistance voltage across the resistance the difference will be given over here so 12 minus 10 2 volts so you will get 2 volts drop here 15 minus 10 5 volts drop here so 10 plus 2 10 volts here 2 volts here 15 here uh, sorry uh, sorry 10 over here 5 over here together 15 if this is totally 10 to, uh, 20 then 10 and 10 volts 21 means 10 and 11 volts so 10 and 11 10 and 10 10 and 5 10 and 2 always this will be 10 the remaining voltage is dropped across some other uh, resistor or other device so that's how it is able to regulate the voltage you can see that that's how it is able to regulate regulate the voltage it's maintaining the voltage okay that's the logic behind it cool let's have a look at one question on the zener diode coming up on your screen uh, question is find the currents in i iz and il find the currents in i iz and il okay let's have a look at it how do we do that how do we do that well first of all this is zener diode whose breakdown is 10 volts that is given to me so this 10 volts is not only across this diode because this resistor is in parallel with this this resistor is in parallel with this so these two points are at the same voltage these two points are at the same voltage so hence the voltage difference between them will be 10 volts whether you take these two points for reference they are at the same voltage and even these two points are still at same voltage so the difference between this and this this and this is going to be 10 volts because this is a zener diode operated at reverse bias so it will ensure it will be in the breakdown region only so out of 60 volts which was given as input 10 volts is across the zener diode naturally my dear students the remaining voltage how much remaining voltage will be how much 60 minus 10 60 minus 10 which is 50 volts will be across the 4 kilo ohm will be across the 4 kilo ohm correct yes or no my dear students very nice so using v is equal to ir using v is equal to i r voltage is 50 current is i resistance is 4 kilo 4 kilo 4 into 10 to the power 3 so current i over here will be 50 by 4 50 by 4 which is 25 by 2 which is 12.5 but this will be milliamperes 12.5 milliamperes i can see option c and option d over here which has 12.5 12.5 so either it is this or it is this let's check it out yes it is one of them only other two options got eliminated at least 50 50 probability we got okay now the next thing how do i find iz and il use this particular branch use this particular branch this particular branch over here in that branch if i again use v is equal to ir voltage across it is 10 current is i l resistance is 2 kilo that means 2 into 10 to the power 3 so i l will be 5 milliamperes 10 by 2 is 5 10 to the power minus 3 will make it milli oh so it will be 5 milliamperes across i l i l is the third quantity is the third quantity so that is 5 milliamperes naturally it should be d but one more thing we'll just try to do it one more thing for this particular zener diode for this particular zener diode if i want to find iz what i will do is at this junction i'll apply kirchhoff's current law 
I'll apply Kirchhoff's current law. Look at this. Current entering in is current exiting out. So this is 12.5. IZ I don't know. IL is nothing but 5. From this IZ is nothing but 7.5 milliamperes, which is right over here. So that is option number D. Is that right, everyone? Very good. Awesomeness. So that was our last experiment. And I hope you had fun with these physics practicals. And if you did have and you learned a lot, please put it up. And if you did not know the theory, what does it tell you? It means we will have to go through the theory again and again. You can search on YouTube for my lectures in English. Okay. Doesn't matter whether it is on GE or NEED channel. You can watch it if you want to understand the theory. So just search for any topic. Let's say you want to learn semiconductors. Just search Shreyas Sir Semiconductors. Okay, you want to learn uh, sound and waves, Shreya Sir waves, you will get the videos, whether it is one short or long lectures, you can watch it. Okay, so I want all the students who watch this lecture till the end to put it up, fun, P-H-U-N, there is a pun over there, because P-P-P, fun with physics practicals, okay, so very bad joke, but still, okay, right, so thank you so much guys, I hope you had a great time today. Uh, we had a lovely evening. Uh, I'll be sharing the PDF later on. Okay. Bye-bye. Hasta la vista. Captain Shreyas signing off.